Hi everyone, McBeard here, back with another deck guide for you. I recently hit rank 20 with this deck, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, just took a couple of games off stream actually to get it done, but this deck is really, really strong. It's based on a blueprint from uh, Delta 65's 31 card consume. The link to his guide is in the description for this video. For the most part, I played his exact deck with uh, some flex spots uh, specifically. I'll quickly go through the deck. There's a lot of gameplay for you though, so I want to get right into that. But um, just to start things off, this is an Erica's Queen deck, which looks like a giant meatball, and that's why I call it the Meatball Sub. Uh, for the most part, I usually call it just playing the meatball. Um, on top of that, um, you know, the non-negotiable goals, I think, are probably Woodland Spirit, uh, in that it helps you apply pressure on the board and gives you beast to consume with your meatball, uh, so you can get your harpies out. Phoenix for your finisher, Phoenix into Slizzard, into Forktail, into Necker, or some variation of that, is an extremely strong bomb card to play last. Playing, it's pr pretty much like the main strategy on how this deck can close out games. And the tempo in round one is how you're able to force passes or at least beat a deep round one fairly easily. There's just so many really good combos. Gels, of course, is just for consistency. Most of the time, you know what you're going to get. You can at least kind of plan around what you're going to see. Finally, Regis Higher Vampire. You're going to see two games here, actually. The first game, this slot is held by Caretaker, and then later, Regis Higher Vampire. Delta himself runs Igni sometimes. I have also been known to run Wispus Tribute in a different setup of Silvers. So it's pretty flex. There's a lot of options within Consume there. As far as the Silvers are concerned, your Toad Prince is there to eat Manticore, and then your Owl Ghoul is also also there to eat Manticore. Your monster nest can create a ghoul to eat Manticore, but also creates a, uh, an 11 point Ericus Behemoth, which is pretty threatening as well. Manticore isn't as important to eat because there's a lot of like 10s and 11s that go to graveyards on both sides, so you can usually find a decent amount of value from Al Ghul while you can use your monster nest a bit more liberally and creatively. Perhaps you need a Drowner from some situations, perhaps you need a Barbagazi for resilience. So you can be really you can be really flexible with Monster Nest. Finally, Summoning Circle to protect yourself against the Spy Spam. PSA, I am quite salty in these gameplays. I was not having a great day <laughs> during these videos. So you see me get a little bit upset about Spies. And uh, generally, I'm very tired of talking about Spies by the time the second game rolls in. So please forgive me. I'm a happy person. Not so happy in this particular gameplay, but the gameplay is decent. So I decided to publish the video anyway. So bear with me. Um, as far as the bronzes are concerned, this is a 31 card consume list. Three behemoths, they're really good. 20 point bronzes in a lot of cases. Really strong cards, very threatening. The fork tails are super important um, in that they provide two consumes for necker buffs. You eat the eggs from Seleno Harpies, it's an 18 point play, and you can close out by cycling necker. It's very, very strong. Um, better than Vrans, basically outclasses Vrans in almost every single way. Seleno Harpies are very strong, create eggs. Um, for the Fork Tails to eat, maybe for the Arrakis, uh, the Arrakis Queen to eat. One Foglet for Woodland Spirit, three Neckers because that's your win condition in the end, cycling these guys. They get up to about double digits very, very regularly, even if your opponent tries to deny you. Harpies come out when you play the Meatball on three Beasts, generally. You want to do that early. It's just great tempo. You don't really lose anything. It's not overcommitment when you do this because getting these out of your deck is very important. Erica's drones, you can play them from hand if you have to. Mulligans are kind of tough sometimes, but the Erica's drone being played from hand is, total, is totally fine. It's better when they all come out due to an Erica's behemoth spawn. And finally, the Slizzard is perfect. Like I said, Phoenix into Slizzard, into Forktail, into Necker is a fantastic way to end. But the Slizzard will also help you source more Erica's behemoths if you're in a control situation. So this deck is very strong. I have some gameplay for you. Two games coming up. Hope you enjoy the video. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And I'll see you soon. Caretaker is for whatever. Caretaker doesn't, Caretaker's flex. Caretaker is just usually to grab, um, like... A Beastmaster or something. Onward, sons of Nirvka. He's usually like something great in, in one of the graveyards. You can grab uh you can grab uh like locked like locks if you need it. It's just a really versatile card. Calvin, right? So this could be Witcher Alchemy, so the Behemoth might not be great. But we will see. Summoning Circle might save our lives. Oh boy. 
Very interesting. Okay, so this deck is easy to beat, but maybe not with this deck. He didn't play any Alba, though. Now, how did that incantation go? I think we just out tempo this deck. Here's our chance. Ah, uh huh. Probably has another one of those. I mean, if he has them, then there's no point in saving them, because they just get killed later. Slavery deck easy to beat? Isn't it unstoppable for 2-0 all in? No. I mean, there's like... I'm too old for this shit. Like, I would say that... Oh, Runestone shit. Runestone spy? Fuck my life. So, it's easy to beat if you have, like, any sort of removal at all, because you just remove stuff. I shall be but then again, this deck isn't playing Albus, so it may not be the same thing. Runestone Spy. Well, I guess I'm just fucked, right? Let us see. I would rather have a Slizzard in my hand. And the fork tail at the bottom of my deck for the Slizzard. No one can hide from me. If there is one moment where you can say Gwent sucks, it's because of this shit. It's like the one thing. It's honestly like the only thing that I have a real problem with. Everything else I think I can make peace with and I can reconcile. In case you guys wanted my views on it, because I don't really talk about it very much, but I do, I do despise this mechanic. You think Summoning Circle is the problem? It's really easy. Just make Runestones take Silvers that aren't in your deck. That's all. I mean, it's not really easy. That's yeah, not easy. How did that I'm just saying go? that it would even make them... See, this is so good that he's, he's playing these for no reses. Now I'm up 17 on even cards. Well, I gotta get my... Uh, I gotta play my Meatball. He'll pass, and if he doesn't pass, we're, we're good, right? Because his round one is so slow. He's going to pass really soon anyway. It's not really overcommitment to play this either because there's only so many boards where I can really play the meatball. And if he did. But he passes 100% here. And I just we just kind of fly into round two here and try our best. If he does play, I think we get out of here. Yeah, I think we pass here. What could he pay? What could he play that's... Could he do 42 points in two cards is the question. With what he has on the board right now. Maybe if he had Albus. Well, that'll help him. Because I'm pretty sure he can do 19 points now. This guy's relentless. I don't know. I don't know about passing sub twenty. Twenty five is my magic number usually. These days, twenty five is like my safe pass number. And even then, it's not even safe. Nilfgaard's so crazy. Always has been. Always will be. That's probably fine. Just depends on how they do it. What's gonna happen is maybe I win this game and I eat my words. Double spies didn't uh, cost me anything. But did he play Summoning Circle? Does he still have Cantarella? Or did he play Cantarella from hand? Uh, Woodland Spirit is guaranteed off Gels now, so we want a long round. So we probably just pass here, right? We probably just pass here. He 
He could have those Albas. He could have the Alba Cavalry. The Alba Cav. Alba Cavo. So this deck, you saw a deck today based around pumping up one unit of the enemies with Swallows and then copying it with the Silver Dude and Regis. The opponent one to zero. Yeah. Yeah. I have seen that. I don't know if I'd be able to beat it if I saw it. What did I draw? Another Slizzard? Do I need two Slizzards? Uh-oh. Well, Gals can still pull me Al Ghul, Imperial Manticore, or Monster Nest, so it's probably fine. Hand looks pretty good, right? Not too bad, not too bad. I can Slizzard to Fortale and Res a Fortale, which is good because I have Ericus Behemoth and 3 neck. Like, honestly, like my hand looks really good. I think this is a very promising hand. I have Peter on call for Caretaker, which is pretty good. I am no so if he does play something like, uh, if he does play something like Alba, I can at least smoke that. That won't be, that won't be a big problem. Also, I can just delete these buffs as well. See, now, why would he not play at 1, 2, 3? Like, you'd think if he was doing it like that, he would he would protect himself from that being bad. Don't want to play Woodland yet. But he's going to keep buffing, so maybe it's totally fine just to play Woodland now. It might just be fine to play it here. I mean, he's always going to be stacking rows. For beer and he's always going to be buffing with beer he has one more beer to play this is probably okay it's probably okay just to do this placement it's not letting you select whisper oh weird well how about this um do you have it do you have it in gwen tb What's it called? I'll just search it. I'll just search it. You can get a link permit. It's just like kind of difficult for me. I'm trying to play the game, so like, that was there's only so much I can do for this kind of stuff, but I can search it. So Peter's looking better and better, which is great. So that's all three ales. Peter just deletes that stuff. We'll play this. He has vipers, right? So he'll be able to kill this, but I'll be able to... No, I just... Well, Monster Nest potentially could give me another one. Monster Nest is probably good for that purpose, knowing that there's still so many consumes that are going to occur. So Gelson to Monster Nest gives me Behemoth. Gelson to Algol gives me just uh, 13 strength Algol. There's not much else to say about that. And uh, into Imperial Manticore, it's just going to be Manticore. So Gels has the potential to be 14, but a 1 in 3 chance to be much better than that. We follow Letho's lead. Yeah. So I think I try for the Monster Nest here. Naivety is a fool's Didn't get blessing. It. So eight is the thing. Although, if he's running ointment, I don't really want him to get this back. Right? To get this back. So I actually am just going to eat this, just to be safe. My last plays are Necker, Slizzard into Forktail, and then finally uh, Phoenix into Forktail uh, into eating the final neck. And Toad will be eating whatever it pulls. We so follow what it is. Letho's lead. Okay. Should that have been my last play? This is fine. This is fine. This this means that now Phoenix reses Slizzard into Forktail and eats. Like, I only have one Forktail play now. Anyway, no matter how this works, I only have one Forktail play now. So I actually go ahead and just eat this, I think. It seems weak as shit, though. Quite the main 
task. Very interesting. He has two Viper Witchers on the board. Nah, he's going to get one now. I res the Viper Witcher. Is it crazy to res the Viper Witcher? Like, how many points do I... Do? So if I res Peter, Peter is a 20-point play. But he then has a 15-point res. Could actually kill the Necker. Do I just res... Do I just go ahead and res the Witcher? So it, becomes, it goes from being a 20-point play to a 9-point play, but it actually removes... It removes options for him. Huge options for him. He burned that on purpose, right? He burned that on purpose? This might lose me the game, but I think I can afford it. I think I can afford it, because I think he has a dead he has a dead ointment now. I think it just, it represents, um, it's too dangerous for my final combo for him to, for him to do that. Maybe not. Maybe that was still stupid. I shouldn't have placed it there though. That was stupid of me. I will lose, I'll lose because of that actually. That's what, that's what will actually lose the game for me. Does he have a solution for this too? Because fuck me if he does. It's just a dead ointment, right? It's an ointment that reses a Vico into... He has no ale left. It's an ointment. The slave. All right, are we good then? Gotcha. There it is. Wes, thanks very much, man. So, I think I made the right choice. I definitely did, could position the Viper better. I didn't have to be that close, but... Play a few more games, I think. Hardest matchups are Control Scoia'tael. Easy to increase percentage against Villain decks by adding Wispus. Manticore. Wispus Manticore. Wispus Manticore Venom? Oh, yeah, because it's a perfect fit. I mean, if I'm running Parasite, why don't I just run Manticore? The risk is I don't get full value. Of Kedwin, attack! Well, the data doesn't really it doesn't look great. Uh, I mean, I, I would have to do a monitor cap or a window capture. I'd have to settle that up, which takes me some time. Damn! It actually came to me. With no toad to save me. For me, build the reason. Not really crazy, but my draws in the past couple of games has been like really, really crappy cards. Bye bye. This is, um, Hensel beats consume pretty soundly, I think. This is probably, I would say this might be a bad matchup. I think this might be a bad matchup. A lot easier with Venom. Because of the Rose. What are you talking about, Venom? Manticore Venom? How long can I stay in the round matchups? Yeah. Winch Hensel. Okay. Okay, this is fine. Uh, 
Aye, aye, sir. Phoenix Finisher is still better than everything Hensalt does. You want peace? Fight for it. What if he passes at like an insane lead? I don't let that happen, I guess. <clears throat> Twenty-seven points seems like actually impossible to come back from. I can't even do it in two cards, right? I'm screwed. I lose this game. My draws are awful, man. Awful. When's the last time I had Woodland Spirit in my opening hand? You've your response on Spy Fix. Your Spy Fix. What if you could create spies, but spies would only work once a game? As you could hit. I'm already like. It's already. I'm already like. There's a. Par if I had a paragraph explaining a card to me, it's probably not a good fix. It's just like, that's the problem. That's the thing that Gwen's going through right now in the first place. The fact that it's you... Oh. When you go, when you need to fix something and you have to explain it and you need to do it in more than a sentence, it's a bad thing. Oh, I see you've thought about this. In my opinion. It's just, it, it's too much explaining. If it's not a simple fix, then it's probably better in its own complicated oh. state. So you've thought about this. Removing Foglet is proper? Well, this is like the one time this happened. It's like the one time this has happened. Okay, so my finisher is better and I'm going to be able to act last, right? Do I play Necker? Yeah, I play Necker, right? I play Necker. I think all we need... I mean... How do you even code something like that? Like, the way it would work, I think, better if runestones didn't pull silvers from your deck, pulled silvers outside of your deck, and then that's the that, that's it, right? Heim is a different issue. I don't know how to fix Heim. Now I mulligan into Foglet, and I cry. Ooh, dodged a bullet there. So now our hand looks amazing. Our hand went from being trashy to flashy, I would say. And what's our leadoff play? Fair amount of consume here. Actually, playing the Slizzard. We have Slizzard in the graveyard? No, but we can get it in the graveyard for Phoenix. Forktail is... There's nothing. So that's the problem, right? There's nothing for the Phoenix right now. Slows it into Slain Harpy into Forktail. And I need to eat. Stand and but fight. I need to eat. I need to eat a dragon, basically. A dragon needs to go to my graveyard. Somehow, some way. So the Slizzard is it. The Slizzard needs to go to the graveyard. I'm probably playing Phoenix early because of that. To get the second Slizzard out. So I Slizzard into Slain Harpy. The Forktail needs to eat the Slizzard and an egg. That's not even good, right? I might as well just, I might as well just, uh, I might as well just slizzard the behemoth out. Now I've got two targets for the forktail. And more spawns. Forktail the slizzard? Yeah. Toad forktail? Oh, Toad Forktail is also interesting. But I think the Slizzard should be okay. Because the Slizzard can still get me a Selena Harpy. Wait, is Toad Forktail better, though? If only I could get a second Forktail right now. Maybe the Forktail will just end up getting killed anyway. 
I mean, I don't know what the Toad's eating. That's the thing. So maybe I do play Toad. Regis probably I want to play too. This might just be a safe Regis turn. Toad or Regis? Toad or Regis? Do I want to prevent this from being a thing? Just put it in the graveyard. He doesn't have any Siege Masters in the graveyard, so Shawnee, Shawnee Siege Master isn't the craziest thing, so I kind of prevent that. Woodland? Yeah, yeah, Woodland, fine, yeah. Oh, I'm a medic. I tend to know what I'm doing when I prescribe something. In fact, if I play Gauss now, I get... If I play Gauss now, I get Woodland, I put Manticore on top, which means the Toad eats Manticore, which is better, right? The Slither might just die by itself. I'm missing some Consume Ops here. Too bad about that armor, but oh well. Naivety is a fool's blessing. My plays are looking amazing now, really. I'm an officer and a gentleman. Rip Commander's Horn value. Shit, that would have been really good, uh, really good Commander's Horn right there. Unfortunately, no. Then again. He's probably going to just ignite it, right? Yeah, I have a necro attack. It's fine. I could slither the necro. That's one thing I could also do. Like, honestly, I think I just play the Necker, Commander's Horn, Al Ghul, the, uh, the Manticore. So, I, yeah, I play Necker, Commander's Horn. Necker, Commander's Horn, Al Ghul, and then uh, Phoenix into Selena Harpy, and then Forktail into Selena Harpy, if the Necker is not dead. But I don't mind if the Necker dies, I think. That's the thing, right? I don't mind if it dies. There might be an Igni. There might be a villain Tretmirth as well. Igni and Henselt? You don't think so? I mean, villain Tretmirth is a higher likelihood. <laughs> I think if he was running a hen uh, villain Tretmirth, though, he would be pinging the Toad, right? To try to line something up. Maybe I'm crazy. Setting up Villain Tretton with Scorch. Lots of prior experience. Worked with idiots my whole life. I can't believe Deekstra and Dun Banner is still a thing people people run. I pass on every tenth round. Villain Tretton is the next one, I guess. Okay, those, that was not even that intense of a Dijkstra. Still in Treadmirth now, right? Okay. So 18. I'm trying to avoid 18. The problem is the Forktail is 18 if it eats the Selena Harpy. So, I 
That means I need to eat the necker, which is fine. In which case, do I not just slizzard out the Ericus behemoth? If I slither out the behemoth and then I do two chomps, I miss a buff on the egg, but I kind of get that buff back with the Ericus behemoth. I feel like that's the best way I can do it. As long as nothing hits 18. I had by a lot of points right now. What's he doing? Behemoth is better? Spe yeah, the points. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Unfortunate, but I don't know if that sinks me. So this is now a 16 point, and then I just need to eat like a three. And that's like the most efficient way of conserving my points under Villain Tretmer. Wait, how big is the Necker now? I'm actually lost track. Because he's hit this a couple times. It's definitely not 18, so I have nothing to worry about, right? It's 21 points. Because this is, goes, this is uh, 16, 17, 18, 19 points. Well, he could still level it out. He could level it off. I should go 8 and 8. Or 5. Seven is too high. Five is just right. All right, show me. Islander Priest. Oxeneer, what's up? It's my cousin in the house. Good stuff. Alright, alright. Oh, we got some ore. 